Success in section two is about one thing. And the delivery of this 25 minute session is about one thing, which is writing the first sentence of your short answer response in section two. The first sentence of any question. So that's what this session's about, writing the first sentence and how that leads to success. The presentation is divided up into the six parts of the syllabus. So we'll look at person, then ethics and practice, as the syllabus does, looking at each of the dot points. This is a cheat sheet for section two. But I tell you now, I ask you to challenge yourself, even to look at your responses that you have written and try your very best to reimagine them, written in this way, in, with this format. So success in section two, and I have to uh, start off with the story first. And I told you earlier in the conference that I met Jonathan Noble 15 years ago when, I was, when we were marking the HSC. And it was a, a great introduction for me into how to think differently, especially when you start to officially mark those responses. And then I was involved in the Board of Studies Committee and that committee got me to, to sit down and look at some exemplar texts. So we looked at work from the previous year and, and there was quite a, an audience there, but probably six people that very experienced people. And someone gave us the project of someone reading the, the exemplar text and then calling out when you knew what the mark was from that text. So this, the person read the text and they were re reading it and they got to the end of the first sentence and this very experienced person said five. Well, it made me stop and think. It made a judgment very early in the writing of the piece because they knew what was to come. The person had already answered the question in the first sentence already answered the question in the first sentence. That's our task today, to look at each of them and look at how we can do that. There are a few dots missing from my PowerPoint, so I apologise for that. The one you'll see in Google Classroom, and I encourage you not to type this stuff. I want you to think and process and take ideas away and how you can better yourself in your next writing or how you could have improved something. So don't just copy this down because remember this is on and available for you on Google, Google Classroom. So the first one is to explain the contribution of the person to the development expression of that religious tradition. A word I have for you, you know, you have, have you always confused contribution and impact? And, and you're not quite really sure what it is. I'm sure some of the Teachers out there as well probably have exa feel exactly the same way. How can I differentiate between the contribution and the impact? Well, there's a word I like you to use for contribution, which is formation. How they have formed others and the community. How they have formed them. So in terms of contribution, that's what we're looking at. Now, in the first sentence, you need these things in the first sentence. First of all, you need to say that they are responsible for the promotion or reform of something, because they were, each of them. Each of these people, that, that's why we're studying them. They are responsible for promotion or reform of that tradition. So we need to state that clearly. You're stating, you're explaining their contribution right from the very first start. Make a specific reference to that person. Promoted or used the principal beliefs of the religious traditions. So have they, they've done that. You need to say that. You need to say that in your answer, that that's exactly what they did. They had respected spiritual writings that led to revival. A lot of these, remember, these people are not the founders of the faith. These are the people that, or the organisations that did something different to bring the faith alive. That's why they're chosen. So they have, they have 
included or added to the, the writings that make it so it leads to revival. They had or they were involved with missionaries or followers spread, spreading the faith. They had those people. So it's all about formation of others, formation of the community. And the word that's missing from that screen, and it's something that is common to just about every single person we study, is that they created, inspired ethical practices that led to compassion. If you look through every person, you can find within each one that need, that willingness, that wanting to show compassion to the other. That's what they find. So they have that compassion. So that is how you write. Now, you have to do that in the first sentence. In your first sentence to the question, explain the contribution of St. Paul to Christianity. You have to, and this is your guide, in the first sentence, these are the things that that first sentence needs to contain. Those elements. Some of you are sitting there saying, that's a big sentence. Yes, it's a complex sentence, but you are answering the question. And you then unpack what you say in that first sentence throughout the rest of you. And then you follow your peel, seal or teal thing that your teachers tell you to with your five mark questions. You follow that. You follow that structure. But your P or your T or your S, the first sentence, answers the question. No longer will you repeat the question or rephrase it or even look to other parts of the exam paper to find out key words that you could use to add to that first sentence that really don't make much sense. No, no longer. You will answer the question. And if you are asked a question about the contribution, then these are the steps that you follow to get to the answer. That's what you use. So the next part of person is the other part, which is the impact. The impact is, and look at the word in brackets, relational. The impact is relational. So it's how they affected others, how other people um, were, were, I guess, inspired. So the dot points that we need to focus on for our opening sentence for the second dot point, which is analyse the impact, is the, it's important because they developed an expansion of teachings and writings. So they expanded. They, it's important because they developed an expansion of teachings and writings that people read, that engaged with the people. And I love this one. The impact is seen through the successful use of, and, but this is where it becomes very specific to your person. You need to know the, the, the word that's missing. The successful use of something. They did something. They used something. That enhanced, transformed or revived, either one of those three words, everyday belief and practice, especially behaviour within others. So they looked at the everyday practice. So they had an effect on that. So you're looking at the impact on that person. Relational, remember. Relational on others. And they were responsible for transforming or alignment because sometimes, sometimes these people are chosen because they didn't just do something new, they brought it back to where it once was. And so that was the, the alignment. So responsible for transforming or aligning. And what, what is at the essence of all that throughout every tradition? To do good. For people to do good. And for people to come back to the prayerfulness, back to whatever the centre of that faith is, come back to that prayerfulness. And in terms of Buddhism, meditation. Come back to that sense of meditation. And the last point is this, that you have to express very clearly in your first sentence, is that they received support from the people, sometimes unconditional support. Not always but they did receive support from the people. Again, relational. So the difference between contribution and impact is the very distinctive difference between formation and relational.
So now we move to ethical teachings. With ethical teachings, we're talking about environmental ethics, bioethics, sexual ethics. Each one of these situations, in your first sentence, regardless of the question, if it is a how does, or an, or an explain, or a describe, or, or a combination of these things, or an account for, doesn't matter what it is, this is what you do in order to answer the question. This is a scaffold. You first of all need to write down what the ideal is. What is the ideal person? How do they? How do they? Now, now the word in the brackets, sorry, I forgot. The word in the brackets with this one is inquiry. Because with these ethical teachings, you're asked to inquire about environmental ethics or sexual ethics or bioethics, which means it is you immersing yourself within this, but not giving your opinion not your opinion. It is you stating what the religious tradition believes. And what, is the, what does the ideal person within this religious tradition believe? That's, what, that's the first thing that you state. In answering the question, you write down what the ideal person believes. And then you write down the wrong. What is wrong? That is, not what you think is wrong, what, ha what is a person considered to be wrong, what practice is wrong. And then we introduce the guiding principles that relate to the practice. So you've identified the good, you've identified the ideal, the wrong, and then the guiding practices, the guiding principles that relate to the practice. What is it that guides people? What are the fundamental truths about your religious tradition that guides people in this in this ethical practice. And then demonstration of how this is, and then, then the, the demonstration of these practices is all about a commitment to a supreme being. Commitment to God, Allah, Yahweh, commitment to a multitude of Hindu gods, or commitment to, I guess in Buddhism, would be to the truth of the sensation of suffering in this world, which is trying to get to nirvana, doing, trying to build up karmic merit. So a commitment to that cause, commitment to that supreme being. And the last one, it's always an idea in that first part to talk about the consequences of misconduct. And if someone doesn't understand these rules, this is what happens to them, or this is the consequence according to the tradition. These dot points make up the first sentence. The first sentence. It's a complex sentence. I can see the look on some of your faces saying, that's a lot to put into a sentence. But answer the question in the first sentence. That's your job. In section two, answer the question in the first sentence. The next section looks at practice. So we're looking at, and there are multitudes of practices to choose from within section two. In this first part, and there's, I think there's three parts to practice. In this, in this practice, we need to, you need to make sure that you list features. This is probably the simplest verb that you're gonna come across. It says describe. But really what it means in the context of this significant practice is list. List stuff. Know it in a list. Therefore, know when it occurs. Know what it celebrates. Know what it reinforces. And in your first sentence, say that. It occurs here. It celebrates this. It reinforces this. And if you can, and if it's appropriate, look at the differences among denominations and the interpretation of the different texts, if it's appropriate. But the first three, so when you're listing, you really want to say when it occurs, what it celebrates, and what it reinforces. Use those key phrases to help you with this one.
The next is to demonstrate how the chosen practice expresses the beliefs. This is cause and effect. This is something happens and then there's a result of that. There's an action and some, there's a consequence. That's what you've got to talk about here. Cause and effect. And it says, and what you don't do, and I'll say this first, and what you don't do is retell the practice. So you don't say, on day one of the Hajj, the people arrive in Mecca and they do this. On day two, they do, and day three, you don't do that with this question. You don't do that. You start it the other way. You must start from the principal belief. From the belief. Go back to your preliminary cause. And I'm sure some of you are thinking right now, hey, I've been told that a few times already today. Go back to the principal beliefs and start there and say this principal belief, this is how it's lived out in this particular practice. And so that way, if you've got a five mark question, they're really asking for you to name three and to understand three of those. And in your first sentence, you name each belief and show how it's demonstrated in the practice. So you name the belief and show how it's demonstrated. And you do this, you, if you, it's a five mark question, you would do three. If it's a nine mark question, you probably do five at least. So your work has some substance. Never retell the practice. And the most important part where you can use sacred text is in this study, in this particular section of the HSC exam. Use the sacred text here as an example to demonstrate that your, your knowledge and understanding between the practice and the beliefs. You need to reinforce that with sacred text as well. And this is our last slide that we're going to now. And the final part of the, the, part, the section two of the syllabus, and you can see how easy this is when it's broken up into six categories. Analyze the significance of this practice for the individual community. This, again, and I use the same term as I did before, relational. It's relational. So, and these are the steps that you need to write your first sentence. And your first sentence consists of that this practice is a unifying agent to follow beliefs. I think I really love that turn of phrase, unifying agent. It's a unifying agent to follow beliefs, and that's what it is. And that's what you have to say directly in your first sentence. You also need to state very clearly that it develops, demonstrates in parts. You can choose one of those words, whichever one is appropriate for your particular pra practice. In parts, teaching such as caring for the marginalised. This is almost in every tradition. This practice, your practice, may reach out to the marginalised. And what I'm asking you to do is to find something like that or similar that you can attach to that phrase. Some of them can reach out, or most of them reach out to the marginalised in some way. Next is to clarify, it helps the person, the adherent, to clarify their own behaviour and, ex and sets expectations of others. So that's what it does, it helps clarify their own behaviour, but sets expectations of others. You see how we're dealing with both the individual and the community in these phrases? Sets the expectations for oneself, but then or clarifies the expectations of you and sets the expectations for others. Then you need to write some concluding statements. Uh, one really important concluding statement is that this person or this practice brings a deep sense of belonging and identity. Of course, you need to show that when you unpack your sentence, but it brings a deep sense of belonging community. So in your analysis, you're going to show that it brings a deep sense of belonging and identity. Please note that there will be differences within denominations when we come to this practice. For example, in Wessex, if you're doing Wessex and you're saying that every single Wessex ceremony has the bathing of the Buddha, then that's not correct. Because if you go to a Theravadan temple, they don't do the bathing of the Buddha. It's only Mahayana temples that do the bathing of the Buddha. 
And so therefore there's a distinct difference where you can highlight that. And it's important to know those differences. So when your teachers mention those differences, they're the ones you really have to count on in including in your answer. And the last point I make is that use sacred texts. Oh, and you can't see it on the screen, sorry. The last point, but it is on Google Classroom, is use sacred texts as, and or examples that clearly demonstrate this practice. Use sacred texts to demonstrate again. Practice and sacred texts must go hand in hand. Must go hand in hand to have a deeper response. Now, can you imagine writing a first sentence with all that in it? That's challenging. But my, ch my real challenge for you today is go and have a look at the, resp the short answer response that you got two out of five for. And have a look how you answered the question. Have a look how you and whether or not you use these terms in your first sentence. And even go and rewrite that question using the scaffold and the knowledge that you've got now on each of those different questions. Rewrite it and reuse it. And I wonder what sort of mark you would have got if you re realised your potential and just had the skills to write or scaffold your writing in this way. Remember, I leave you with this departing comment. Answer the question in the first sentence. Then you can unpack it after that. You can elaborate and use examples and make links that you've been taught to in the classroom. But answer the question in the first sentence. Thank you.